What's up guys, J.R. Raymond back again coming to you from Bowler X Pro Shop and Training Center here inside Waterford Lanes where today I'm actually, I'm just laying out a few bowling balls. So I want to show you again real quick. I'm going to, every so often I'm going to redo some videos so that way they are new and fresh and you guys can see newer bowling balls getting laid out. But this time we're going to redo um, the Duolingo system and we're going to lay out some bowling balls using that system, explaining the system, talking through it a little bit. So you guys get a little bit better understanding of layouts and what they do. So we're gonna take a couple of bowling balls here, take a look and see what the different layouts should be and how we can use them to create certain ball reactions here in a minute, stay tuned. All right, here we go. So I got uh, the brand new swag ball, the YOLO rocks. You only live once, you know? We're gonna lay it out. We're gonna use dual angle system. Now, the difference between this ball and some of the other ones you'll see uh, is this first angle is not really gonna matter because there is no, uh, there's no mass bias on this. But we get to something like the RSTX2, you'll see there's a mass bias. So there's three markings. You've got the pin here, the pin, the center of gravity, and then the mass bias or the PSA, um, whatever you want to call it. This one does not. This one only has the two markings. It's got the pin and the center of gravity. That's all that matters because this is a symmetrical core versus an asymmetrical core. You guys should know the difference of a symmetric and an asymmetric core by now. If you don't, there's definitely videos that can explain that. But what we're going to do is we're going to lay this out and I'm going to put my typical um 45 by four and a half by 45 degree layout on this now the key that thing that you need to know in order to do this is you must know either the bowlers pap or your own pap uh, which is your positive access point in order to make this happen okay so mine is four and three quarter over by an inch and an eighth up so we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we're going through this now I like to do the first angle still on symmetrical stuff so I can still line up exactly how I want to see it even though it doesn't matter, I still like to do it for visual purposes. So for this first angle, all we do is we draw a straight line from your pin through your CG all the way down as far as we can. And then you're going to line up the zero on your ProSec directly on the pin, straight back through that line you just drew. And we're going to look over here. As you can see, there's different degrees here. Okay, so the closer I get to 10 on an asymmetrical ball, the earlier this ball is going to roll or earlier you're going to make that core start its motion the further away from 10 so the closer to 80 or 85 all the way to the edge here i get the longer the ball is going to get down lane before it's going the core is going to try to take over so for me because this is symmetrical um, I like to get that mass the center of gravity closer move your head bud move back get back i can't see <laughs> move back <laughs> the, I like to get that closer to my palm or straight up and down so I always go 70 degrees on these on the symmetrical ones so you make your mark at 70 degrees you go back to the pen and then line it up with that marking there and we go right through that marking all the way down straight through okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how far we want the pin to be from our positive axis point we want the this is to determine don't drop my lines off this is to determine how much the ball is going to flare, okay? So the closer to three and three-eighths inches we get, back up, the more flare potential or the more actual hook we will get out of a bowling ball. Um, so for me, I'm going to want this to be somewhat strong, so I'm going to go four and a half. For me, four and a half is pretty strong. So I'm going to go four and a half. This is going to be that typical four and a half by 45. So now you make the mark at four and a half inches on that line, and then... Don't be covering up my camera, bro. And then we uh, set that mark, the zero on the ProSec, right back on that mark you just made through the pen. And then we're gonna look here. You can see the different angles on this side again. Now, this angle is a little bit different. This is the angle that's important for these symmetrical bowling balls. The closer to 10 we get, the higher that pin's gonna be, which is gonna make the ball more responsive. The closer to 85 or even 90 we get, the lower you're gonna bring the pin in your layout and it, the slower response or the smoother the transition's gonna be. So that's where the misconception con comes in. A lot of people think that a pin up bowling ball is gonna go longer than a pin down bowling ball, which isn't always the case. Actually, in most cases, 
you get the illusion that the pin up ball hooks earlier than the pin down ball because the pin down ball is technically it's transitioning and it's making its motion much slower than a pin up ball the pin up ball is seeing friction and it's making a quick motion off of that friction so it's a little bit different so we're going to go with that 45 degrees because i like to go right in between we don't want it to be slow but we don't want it to be quick quick so you make that mark there and then you draw that line you make pen, put your pencil right on that line back through that four and a half inch mark you made before and now you've got what's called your VAL, your vertical axis line. So now in order to get where my span needs to be, I have to know what my PAP is. So I am four and three quarter by an inch and an eighth up. So in order to get this to be my positive axis point, I gotta be an inch and an eighth down from here to go to get my center line. So I'm an inch and an eighth down, make the mark an inch and an eighth down, and then you just draw this straight across to get to you draw a line straight across and then I make that mark over here right at four and three quarters right there okay and then we line it back up over here again and we draw it straight up and down so this is now our center of our grip so this turns out to be your center of your grip right here Come back your thumb's going to be down here fingers will be right about there so we'll be good to go there stop touching my camera bro so that's what we end up with there all right now let's transition into laying out an asymmetric ball again we're going to do it pretty much the same way but now you'll notice that this first line i'm drawing it's not going to go straight from the pen through the cg because that'll miss this the mass bias what that first line actually has to be is from the pen straight through the center of the mass bias so now that changes just a little bit because you got to remember this is the top of the core this is where the top is okay so we need to know where the top of the core is at all times and this is where the weight is that's where the center of gravity is and then this is the big part of the core this is where that the mass of that core actually is okay so or the, the, that weird section the spot that is different than the rest that makes it asymmetric okay so now we want to do this first angle and again We've got to remember, the closer to 10, the earlier we get the ball to roll. The further from 10, uh, the later we get the core to take over. So we want this actually to get going. Everything I've seen from a lot of the, the guys that were throwing it in cold water this week, um, we want to get this ball going a little bit quicker. So I'm going to do something like 35. I want to get it moving. I want to get it revving up pretty quick. So we're going to go 35, draw the straight line through that, okay? And then we're going to do our, so we're still going to do four and a half. Still do four and a half. And then we're going to do, we want to make this um, a little quick down lane. So we're going to do 35. So 35 by four and a half by 35. Makes it just a little different than what I normally get. Inch and an eighth down. Draw that straight line over, four and three quarter mark. Straight up and down here. And there's our center line. So now you'll see the difference between that 35 and the 70 is on the 70 here. Can you see that? Yeah. On the 70, you see how much closer the CG is to my center of my palm, to, to the center line. Now we get to the 35, you see how much further that CG is from there or technically it's the mass bias you can see how far we're kicking that over compared to that so if there was a mass bias on this one it would be like right down here right next to the thumb or in the thumb almost whereas this one the thumb's going to be here right you can see how much distance there is between the mass bias and the thumb so this gets the course off balance a little bit which makes the core start to pick up a little bit earlier so that way we can get it to rev up and get to its axis a little bit quicker um, and then we let the core take over down lane and make it strong motion with the other angle with the BAL angle so this will actually work out pretty good same type of layout for the most part but one a little bit quicker one symmetrical one asymmetrical we'll kind of compare the two together just to see what we got but that's all I got for you I just wanted to show you these 
real quick again run you through the layouts run you through how to do it so that way you guys can learn a little bit for yourself as well so i'm out of here we'll see you guys later thanks for watching make sure to hit that subscribe like comment do all that good stuff what's the next ball that you're going to drill um, and that you're going to get from bowlerx.com are you going to come up here and see me i'm up here all the time monday tuesday wednesday for sure um, when there's tournaments on the weekend i'm not here but you can always catch me during the week so come on up to waterford lanes or just go over to bowlerx.com get your stuff over there uh, and until next time we're out of here see you guys later